Still not touching it. I've said it before and I've said it again. That knowledge can drive someone to absolute insanity. And it already has. I'm not going on that road. Leaving YouTube behind. I'm done. Jay's reviews is no more. It always starts simple. All my inspirations all started simple, like I did. But is this the best I can do? Turn out the same? Can you do YouTube without being jaded by all the angry commenters? I don't even know. What I do know it. What? What the? But mostly it's just to blame the people who aren't buying these games. Hey, welcome to part, uh, what is this, part three of Mega Man The All-Inclusive Mega Man X Retrospective. We've reached the end of the All-Inclusive Mega Man X Retrospective. This year we are getting the Mega Man Zero series reviews and crafts a beautiful game. Mega Man ZX Advent just sucks. That's right, I'm back. It's a brand new year and I find out that we have a Mega Man Zero ZX Legacy Collection that doesn't quite roll off the tongue like XLC did, so we'll just call it ZLC for short. A lot of folks praised me for predicting this collection's release, but seriously, I didn't look into a crystal ball. I said that the XLCs in Mega Man 11 sold well and the obvious next step would be this, a collection of X's sequel series, Mega Man Zero. And since its sequel series, Mega Man ZX, only had two games, might as well put them together and bam, ZLC, and I'm happy to see it. Mega Man's main timeline is one that's scattered all over the place. Think about it, six games on NES, five games on SNES, seven games on PS1, two games on PS2, four games on GBA, two on DS, and two on 7th Gen systems. But now we live in a world where almost the whole classic, whole X and whole Zero series are on the same consoles, and it's cool. I hesitate to say that I'm still mostly known for Mega Man, this channel has come a long way since 2017 and 2018, but we all know that I've had quite the trip with the Mega Man franchise. And so I left it for the entirety of 2019, but that year is over. We have a brand new collection to review and I couldn't be happier to do it. While the Legacy Collections are my preferred way to play most of these games, I still do have nothing but respect for these collections as they make the series more accessible than ever before. I had to dispel the myths about the value of the Classic Legacy Collection 2 and the X Legacy Collections in those videos, and even though I shouldn't have to, I will again. If you consider this collection some kind of ripoff, please click away now. We live in the year 2020. The Mega Man Zero Collection was released in 2010 on the DS, a game you could only play with DS or 3DS hardware, two outdated machines. That version does have proper scaling going for it, but otherwise, it is dead. We also live in a world where Mega Man 11 exists. The oh, they just want to milk ports and make no new games excuse is dead as well. Let it go. Now, with that said, how does the Mega Man Zero slash ZX Legacy Collection hold up? I can already tell you one thing they did really well in the reveal trailer. I said back in 2018 that one of the biggest issues with Mega Man was the fact that the billion games were just releasing with no real context. No idea what it is in relation to the other thousand games releasing at the same time. The Zero series is more obscure in comparison to the X series, and so not only is the price more affordable, but the trailer opens up by telling us that Mega Man Zero 1 follows X's best friend Zero 100 years after the X series. So now, if you didn't know, these games are the next step after the X games you just played. And then it tells a great story from there. Great marketing strategy, deserves all the points in the world. They even went further with this as the Mega Man Twitter published character trailers for Zero One, ZX, and ZX Advent, and a trailer fully explaining that Mega Man Zero follows Zero from the X series and showing what's changed and what stayed the same. A trailer explaining how biometals work, you can really tell that a lot of love has been poured into this collection. I said this about XLC, but the ZLC has shown time and time again a dedication to delivering a good product, as the collection was delayed by over a month a few months back. And they even redrew the cover art just to make it more on model. That's dedication. Now, how about the set itself? So let's start with a tiny nitpick. The Classic and X series were divided into two collections, and despite this being one collection, it feels like two. At the start, you have to pick between the Zero series and the ZX series, where you then select the respective games. Here you have access to the usual art gallery containing high quality artwork from the games, some of which is never before seen, which is always great to have, especially as someone who needs this art for thumbnail design. The music player, allowing you to listen to the soundtracks of all the games from Zero One to ZX Advent, as well as the new remix tracks like XLC did. And I owe a huge apology to ZX Advent's soundtrack especially, as that's good shit right here. 
However, Zero Force GBA soundtrack is ear poison. I'm not taking that back. My nitpick is just, I don't know why you have to back in and out to pick between the Zero and ZX games when there's only two games in the ZX side to begin with. You can alternatively swap between the two menus with the press of a button, but I think one menu would have made more sense. It's just a weird menu as both sides have the option of opening the gallery and the music player, but it's the same gallery and same music player with all six titles. Again, just a nitpick, but I wanted to mention it as I think it would have been better as one menu. Now let's get into the games. They really did go all out with the features this time around to make sure from a gameplay standpoint that these modern versions would be fairly definitive as the Mega Man Zero 3 e-reader functionality is present in the ZLC version of the game. Which, by the way, the e-reader was an add-on for the Game Boy Advance that allowed for in-game modifications and unlockables. You can also get access to the rematches against Zero 3 and 4 bosses in ZX1 that were only present if the GBA games were in the GBA cartridge slot while you were playing ZX in the original DS. The best of all, though, is that for the voice acting in ZX Advent, the acting itself still isn't anything great, but I can't say I wasn't impressed by the fact that they went out of their way to get the original audio recordings of the voiceover and allow you to listen to that in-game instead of the garbled mess in the original DS version of ZXA. This is one tough nut to crack, but I'm almost there. This is one tough nut to crack, but I'm almost there. They also have the uncompressed anime cutscenes, which is admirable for the same reasons. The Mega Man X Legacy Collections faced criticism for the input lag issue, which honestly never bothered me personally as I have played through all games in the XLC, well, except X5, and never had much difficulty with that. But to address this issue, the ZLC sought to use the source code of the Zero and ZX games to ensure the best play experience. For this, I'm grateful, as I didn't notice any noticeable input lag at all. All these features I've mentioned go to show that effort got put in here, and that's how I felt about all these collections. Each game comes with a casual scenario option and a save assist option. Casual scenario works the same as the easy scenario from the DS Zero collection, as you get to unlock everything from the very beginning of the game, with the feature carried over into the ZX titles as well. Save Assist is there to add more checkpoints to the stages and can be loaded from the menu like the Classic Legacy Collection 2, which I'm sure comes in handy in all the games if you're inexperienced, as lots of these games can be tough, for better or for worse. Much like Rookie Hunter Mode in 2018, though, I think Casual Scenario is just too easy to be a better alternative to the balancing issues in Zero, 1, or 4, for example. For anyone who cared about this, though, the localized versions of the Zero games censored out the red splashes that would come out of enemies in the Rockman Zero games, so you can change the game edition to Japanese if that's your preference. I don't really care about that, so I'll just play in English. I do like how you can skip over the cutscenes of Zero 3 through ZX Advent on your first playthrough, as I love most of these stories, but on repeat playthroughs, I just want to get to the game. Zero's 1 and 2 never had cutscene skipping, so I find myself just mashing through the scenes of those games. But on the whole, there isn't a whole lot to talk about with how the games play, as these are six very similar and consistent games, unlike the X Legacy Collection, which had four different engines to work with. I think these versions play very well, and for the Zero games especially, I see myself coming back to the PS4 renditions of the games. Which leads to the graphics settings. Like previous collections, you have the obligatory borders. The older I get, I just care less and less for borders. I think it just looks better with the black backgrounds. However, I still really liked the basic aesthetic that the Classic Legacy Collection 2 had, and I wish we could still get something like that. Because I think most of these borders are an ugly cluster of PNGs. They also use the same Zero art for both Zero 3 and Zero 4, which is pretty lame, as Zero 4 definitely has its own art you can use. We also have filter options, which the smoothing feature is even uglier than borders. Seriously, I can barely tell what I'm looking at half the time. I just don't like smoothing out pixelated games. If you prefer bilinear filtering, that's you, but I can't see the appeal of the smooth filter. I'm just not a fan. Most bizarre of all, though, is this static filter. In previous collections, they were used to try and replicate the CRT look. Not very convincing, I might add, but these were GBA and DS games. If you played them on original hardware, you wouldn't see any of this static, so I don't know what they were going for here, but again, I think it's ugly. So thankfully, we can ignore that crap and play with ordinary pixels. Speaking of trying to replicate the original experience, this is where the screen size options come from. I always jokingly say, stretched. Don't pick this. But this always leads people in the comments asking me why, so I'll just say that for someone who cares about the image looking a certain way as I work with footage for my videos, I just don't like and can barely look at an image that's distorted and just not looking how it's supposed to. It just bothers me as a creator in ways that it didn't when I was playing these games back in the day before I was a YouTuber. Anyway, the smallest screen size option for the GBA games is a too small for my liking, but if you want the smallest look for GBA accuracy, go for it. My personal favorite is the medium sized one as it's a decent sized image, and for another reason I'll get to in a second. I would pick the full screen option, but I can't pick this or the smallest one for one reason, the integer scaling. I'll try to explain this well and briefly. This is something that all Mega Man Legacy collections past the first one have suffered from. Bad scaling can lead to a distortion of the image that distracts while playing because the health bar is all screwed up. 
first and foremost. But then there's this shimmering effect on the screen as the pixels are changing size right before your eyes to fit the largest and smallest screen size options. The first Mega Man Legacy Collection avoided this by having an interpolation feature which created in-between pixels to fill the space. This is best showcased in Zero 2's intro stage. Look at these squares in the background in the medium size image. All the squares are equal in size, but in all other screen sizes, they are not even in size, which just distracts me as I can't unsee this. But luckily, we have the medium size one for a perfect integer scaled Mega Man Zero experience. The same cannot be said for the ZX games. It's great that they put such a wide variety of screen options for these games as they were DS games, so preferences vary a lot on this, but I can't get into any of them because there is no pixel perfect option for the ZX series. My preference would be to have the top screen be the big one on the left, and the bottom screen be the tiny box on the right. But that damn health bar is staring back at me at all times while playing, so if I ever go back to the ZX games, it's probably going to be original hardware, unless it's a stream or something. But again, this is only going to bother people like me. Much like the extra challenges from the Classic series and the X Challenge mode from XLC, ZLC offers the Z Chaser mode, which allows you to race against a computer, a friend, or the leaderboards for the best time in the stages of all six titles. My original complaint with this mode would be the lack of online, but that's been given a day one patch. Instead, I must say I will never touch Z Chaser again after this video because of the baffling decision to not allow you to rebind the controls to your preference, which is terrible. I don't like the default controls. I want type B mapping. I want to jump on X. So I cannot get into a mode that doesn't allow me to play Mega Man how I play Mega Man. Even with its poor design, I prefer X Challenge over this for that very reason. But as a bit of side content, you don't have to play it, so I won't. And that's that. Despite how long the XLC video was, this one was pretty short since, like I said before, these games are all very similar, so when you say something about the Zero One play experience, it's pretty much a one-size-fits-all for every game. But how do I feel about ZLC, though? I mean, it's a great compilation. If you've never played a Zero or ZX game, pick this up. The Zero games on ideal settings have no flaws from my perspective, and the ZX game's scaling issue I mentioned isn't going to bother someone who isn't a giant nerd like me. This is especially cool since the ZX games were never released on the Wii U Virtual Console. This is the first release of the ZX series since 2006 and 2007 respectively, so in that way these games have been preserved in a way like never before. As a set, I think ZLC shows improvement from XLC which already had a lot to offer that CLC2 didn't. Input lag was addressed, we got these uncompressed audio and video files and a plethora of options to fit every preference. Unlike XLC, which didn't have an 8x7 option for the SNES titles, these legacy collections from Capcom just keep getting better than the last. So next in the chronological order is the Legends series. I would love a Legends legacy collection to just perfect the whole legacy collection concept, being the definitive versions of the games. But yeah, I think Capcom did a really good job with ZLC and I'm glad that these games are in more hands than ever before. I hope it sells well too and leads to a ZX3 to resolve the cliffhanger, as these trailers have certainly been hyping up a return of some kind, and I can't wait to be there and see it happen. And to my fans and subscribers, yes, Jay's Reviews is back and it's here to stay. Game reviews are going to return to be my primary content. I got a comment on the DCU epilogue video that thought that the channel was going to go downhill from there, but honestly, I thought about that. I think this is just the beginning. Lots of exciting things are coming your way and I can't wait to get it done. As for Mega Man, yes, my Mega Man avoidance is also done and over with. I am back to the series. I was originally going to explain myself and the whole ZX Advent thing here, but I decided to save that for the next video, so look forward to that. In terms of other things I'm up to, I'm acting as a PR and HR advisor for an Ace Attorney fan project called Ace Attorney The Shield of Justice on the YouTube channel Team Turnabout. The project's led by IKG Productions, who's also the lead writer and director of the series, who also helped with the DCU storyline that you saw unfold for all those videos. The project is a video series created by Ace Attorney fans that's set in an ultimate continuity to Capcom's official Ace Attorney series where the outcome of the flashback trial from Turnabout Succession goes in Phoenix Wright's favor. Elements from the post-Investigations 2 games are implemented in an all-new story for Phoenix and friends. It's been fun watching it progress over the years, even more so from behind the scenes, so I recommend you check it out via the links in the description. You can also contribute yourself if you wish to be a freelance video editor. If so, contact IKG Productions, link to the social media in the description. Otherwise, expect more reviews and editorials to come in the future. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time.